Okay, so we've been talking about Mendelian genetics. Today we're going to talk about um, complex patterns of inheritance. So Mendel stuff works sometimes. Sometimes you have dominant and recessive, but normally it's more complicated than that. Mendel was actually very lucky in that the characteristics he picked did fit his pattern. If he'd picked some other things, it would have not have been nearly as clear cut and he would have had a harder time figuring out what he did. So today we're going to talk about some of these things that are more complex. Okay, so let's review Mendel's laws. The law of dominance. Some alleles are dominant while others are recessive. The law of segregation. Organisms inherit two copies of each gene, one from each parent. Organisms donate only one copy of each gene in their gametes, the egg or the sperm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the law of independent assortment. Genes for different traits can segregate independently during the formation of gametes. So the color of the pea plant doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the shape of the seed, that type of thing. Okay, so Mendel didn't know anything about this, but the chromosome theory of inheritance. Genes are located on chromosomes, and the behavior of the chromosomes during meiosis accounts for the inheritance patterns. But there are many exceptions to Mendel's laws. Some alleles are neither dominant nor recessive. Many traits are controlled by multiple alleles or multiple genes. So here are the four exceptions we're going to talk about. Incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, codominance, and polygenic traits. And we'll talk about those individually. Incomplete dominance. So with Mendel's laws, if you had a red and a white flower, red would be dominant or white would be dominant. One would be dominant over the other. And if you cross them, you would either have red ones or white ones, or you might have some percentage if they were heterozygous. In incomplete dominance, they blend. So a red flower and a white flower make a pink flower. The heterozygous phenotype is somewhere between the two homozygous phenotypes. Neither allele is completely dominant or recessive. So here's an example. In humans, curly hair is incompletely dominant to straight hair. And this is probably an oversimplification with humans, but anyway, the heterozygous individual has wavy hair. So let's cross two people with wavy hair. And you see, here's the one cross. We have uh, one parent is it's wavy and you notice we don't we have two capitals because neither one is dominant over the other we have the curly hair is capital H and the straight hair is what we call capital H prime okay this little apostrophe we call it prime so here's one side of the pennant square there's the other we combine them together we have big H big H big H, big H prime, big H, big H prime, and big H prime, big H prime. So, in our ratios, this one, two big H's, it says up here, it's curly. This one, though, big H, big H prime, is wavy. It's a combination between the curly and the straight. So we have one curly, two wavy, and one straight. If there's incomplete dominance between white flowers and red flowers, what color would the offspring of a red and white flower be? Okay, so here's another example. So Fitz loves growing flowers for his friend Olivia. Her favorite flowers, roses, are found in red, blue, and purple. So you cross the red and a blue and you can get purple flowers. So what if he crosses a blue rose with a purple rose? So blue is going to be R prime, R prime. Red is going to be R, R, capital R, capital R. So we have R prime, R prime, 
r r prime. Okay, and that gives us r r prime. Remember that's a mix, so that will be purple. This will also be purple. This one's going to be blue. And this one's also going to be blue. So we have two purple and two blue. All right, codominance. This is a little different. Both traits are fully and separately expressed. So instead of getting a red flower or a white flower or blending them and getting a pink, we get bands or spots or stripes. They're both there. Red and white flowers make red and white speckled flowers or striped or however it turns out. Blood type is this way. We'll talk about that more here in a second. You have blood type AB is fully A and fully B. It's not either or and it's not a blend. It's both. Blood type is also an example of multiple alleles. So instead of just A and B, there's also O. So we'll get into that here a little bit later. So let's talk about chickens. Maybe. All right. In certain varieties of chickens, the allele for black feathers is codominant with the allele for white feathers. So you have a black one, a white one, but if they breed, you get speckled ones, both black and white feathers. So let's see, black feathers and white feathers are codominant, so let's cross two speckled chickens. So B and W, you see we're using different letters because they're both, you don't have a dominant or a recessive. We have black feathers and we have white feathers, so we use B and W. So we have BW, BW, because it's two speckled chickens. We get one black chicken. Here's a speckled chicken, another speckled chicken, and a white chicken. Okay, so our genotype ratios we have one BB to two BW and one WW. Phenotype we have one black, two speckled, and one white. So let's talk about blood type. This is codominance and multiple alleles. So we have different blood types. We have A, B, and O. And A, B is a combination of A and B. It's fully A and it's fully B. But then in addition to A and B, we also have, it's written as little i, O. A and B are codominant. O, however, is recessive. The only way you can be O is if you have two of the little i's. All right? So O is recessive to both A and B. A and B are codominant. Starts getting a little complicated, doesn't it? So if color in chickens is codominant, what would the offspring of a black and white chickens be? Okay, so let's take a look at blood types. Codominance and multiple alleles. So if a mother has type AB blood and the father has type B blood, what are the possible blood types of their children? Now before um, you could do genetic testing, used to this was the only way they could figure out parentage. And it wasn't a sure thing, but they could prove that a child could possibly be or could not possibly be a child of certain parents. Okay, so type AB, so that's easy enough. For the mother. The father, though, is type B. So he could be homozygous or heterozygous. So he can be homozygous, two Bs, or he could be heterozygous, B and the I for the type O blood. Okay? Now it's confusing they don't use O, but this is the what people have always used. I actually don't remember what it stands for. So you can have type A and A B child a B child, another A B child, and a B child. With this as the father's type, 
you could have AB, the homozygous B, but now you can see A and B are both dominant, so you can have a type A and a type B. You see that? Because A is dominant over the I, and so is B. So if he's homozygous, you get an AB, you have a 50 50 chance between AB and B. If he's heterozygous, you could have an AB child, a BB child. You could have 50% B, let's put it that way, 25% AB and 25% A. Okay, so here's how you can use this to figure out the parentage of a child. So, a hospital has made a big mistake and lost track of which baby belongs to each parent. Can you help them fix this before they get sued? So you have three different babies. One has type O blood, one has AB blood, and one has A. And here are the parents. Mr. and Mrs. Allele, don't you love the names? Have AB, both of them. Mr. and Mrs. DNA, one has O, one has AB. Mr. and Mrs. Gene, one has B and one has O. So let's see how this works. AB and AB. So AB, AB. We get a type A blood, type AB, type AB, and type B blood. So there's three possibilities here. They could have A, B, or AB. So right now we can see baby one could not belong to Mr. and Mrs. Allele. Baby two and three still could, so let's see what we come up with. So here's Mr. and Mrs. DNA, A, B, and O. Remember, O is the two little eyes and it's recessive. So here's a type A, type B, type A, and type B. So this, these, this parent, these parents can only have type A or type B. Therefore, which baby is theirs? Can't be O, can't be AB, so baby 3, we now know, belongs to Mr. and Mrs. DNA. And if B, if baby 3 belongs to Mr. and Mrs. DNA, then that means AB has to belong to the, the alleles, Mr. and Mrs. Allele. Well, let's finish up just to be sure. Mr. and Mrs. Gene have type B blood and type O. Now this gets a little more complicated, doesn't it? Because there's two ways you could have type B blood. So you could have two homozygous Bs, or you could have a B and an I. Let's do the homozygous ones first. One is type O, one is type B. In this case, all four possibilities are B, okay? But if one of the parents has a is recessive for B or heterozygous for B. You have the I, you have BI. So here's a type B, here's a type O, another type B, and another type O. So yes, Mr. and Mrs. Jean could have the type O baby. So baby one belongs to them, baby two belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Allele, and baby three belongs to Mr. and Mrs. DNA. It's not foolproof. There's different possibilities. You can prove that a child can't belong to a set of parents, but you can't prove that the child does belong to a type of set of parents with blood typing. Now with DNA, it's much more accurate, and you can, with a one in several thousand chance, prove that the baby definitely belongs to a certain set of parents. Okay. So other possibilities with multiple alleles and then blood type. We talked about blood type already. You have A, B, and I. Fur color in rabbits. You'd have an albino, spotted, solid, speckled, all covered by different genes. Here's dogs. Um, okay, this is polygenic inheritance. I'm sorry. Polygenic means more than one gene is affecting a certain trait two or more genes. Lots and lots of characteristics are like this. Usually shows a range in phenotype. Skin color, eye color, height, personality, all of these, in humans especially, are covered by more than one type of genes. 
um, skin color. You don't have certain set of colors. It's You have a blend, and all the different colors blend one into the other. Eye color. There's several different shades of brown. Um, height. Personality. Height is a good one. Um, let's see, did I put this on here? No. Okay. So, like, for example, my mother is very short. My father is very tall. I am somewhere in the middle. My brother is actually taller than my dad. So it's genetic, but it's not just short or tall. There's a blend, and there's more than one gene that affects this. Personality. People argue about whether that's genetic at all. There's a lot of stuff that's how you were raised, the things that have happened to you. But if it is genetic, it's covered by many different genes. Occasionally, epistasis can occur, where one gene overshadows all the others. So, like, a dog might have the gene for brown, but if it's got, it has a gene for black, it will cover up that particular gene. Eye color can be that way. Albinism. You may have the genes for dark skin, but if you also have the gene for albinism, then the dark skin gene won't show up because this gene means that there will be no pigment in, in your skin, okay? Okay, now linked genes. Um, these are genes that are physically located on the same chromosome, and they'll likely to be inherited together. So you'll notice people with blonde hair often have blue eyes. Not always. People with red hair often have freckles. Some people with large ears will also have a broad nose. That's because they're on the same gene chromosome, often very close to each other on the same chromosome. So when crossing over can occur, you could separate these sets of genes. But the red and the blue, it's very rare for them to be separated. They're usually right next to each other, and crossing over doesn't usually happen. It's not as likely to happen in between them. So in this example, the red and the blue genes are close together, and they may be inherited together. The purple one is further away, so if crossing over occurs anywhere in here, it can be switched. Linked genes can only be separated or broken apart during crossing over. So how many alleles for blood type are there? Okay, finally, let's talk about sex-linked traits. So remember, males and females have exactly the same chromosomes for pairs 1 through 22. Those are called autosomes. The last pair of chromosomes, called the sex chromosomes, determine the gender of the individual. And if you look here, this one is XX, this one is XY. The Y chromosome is much smaller than the X chromosome. And females are XX, males are XY. Y chromosomes carry few genes. They're not very big. There's not a lot of room for a lot of genes. The X chromosomes are quite large and have many genes that affect many different traits. Sex-linked genes are genes that are found on these chromosomes, the X or the Y. So let's talk about X-linked genes. Genes on the X chromosome are called X-linked. So females inherit gene as normal. They get an X from both parents, and the principle of dominance applies. You have two X's from the, for a female. The male inherits the gene on the X, but not on the Y. So it only gets, a male only gets one copy of the genes that are on the X chromosome. Because males have only one X, they express that trait whether it's dominant or recessive. They could get a recessive trait 
But since there's no corresponding one on the, the Y, it shows up right away. You don't have to get two copies of the recessive trait because there's only one copy. So here you can see the female, has, the mother, has one recessive gene for whatever this trait is. We're not talk, we haven't talked about it yet. The male has one dominant and a Y. Different possibilities. You get a dominant, a recessive because it's not masked by the Y, another dominant, and a, a heterozygous. So you get one normal male, one recessive male, a normal female, and another normal female. See how that works? So X-linked traits are usually much more common in males than they are in females because the male only needs to get one copy of the gene for it to show up. Okay, so if a trait is sex-linked on the X chromosome, is it more likely in males or females? All right, so here's an example. Color blindness. Color blindness doesn't mean you can't see colors at all, but there's certain colors you can't tell the difference between. So in this picture, if you are red-green colorblind, you won't be able to see the number 74 that's written here because the, you won't be able to tell the difference between the red and the green circles, so it won't show up. But color blindness is located on the X chromosome. So normal vision has a capital B, color blindness has a lowercase b. The Y chromosome does not have the gene, so it's written as a superscript to know that it's on the X chromosome and which one you've got. So if you cross a woman who is a carrier for color blindness with a man who is normal, so the mother has normal vision and the father has normal vision. But the mother is carrying this recessive gene. So they can get a girl with normal vision, another girl with normal vision, a boy with normal vision, but here you get a boy who is colorblind. See how that works? You could get a girl with, that was colorblind, but only if the father was already colorblind and the mother was a carrier. All right, well, that's all for the complicated, complex genetics that doesn't follow the Mendelian pattern. Tomorrow I'll give you some practice problems to work on this. Have a good day and stay safe.